Welcome to MIG Welding for Beginners. There are several ways to learn the basics of welding. I checked out some books from the library, watched online videos, and took a 5 hour MIG welding workshop. The best way to learn is by actually welding. I am also a beginner so the welds in this video will not be perfect, but they may be close to what you can expect when starting out. Once you are familiar with the process, start practicing by properly adjusting the settings on your welder and don't forget your personal protective equipment. There are a lot of factors that affect the quality of a weld. It is common to have more than one of these affect your weld when beginning. In any case, you will need a good ground. Start by laying the bead. Pull straight back and try to get a smooth and consistent sound. Practice this until you are comfortable. Now try laying a bead while making a series of lowercase leaves. This helps maintain a consistent travel speed and also generates more heat in the weld. You do not want to travel too fast. However, you do not want to travel too slow either. You can see the difference in the welds. Dip the tip in nozzle gel to prevent splatter buildup, and if you ever have too much electrode sticking out, you can trim it with wire cutters. It is common to have too much stick out when beginning. Do not have too little either. You might need to move your head around until you can easily see the weld puddle and the amount of stick up. Keep laying simple beads with a straight weld in the lowercase e pattern until you are getting consistent results. Try the same techniques on materials of different thicknesses. Then observe and analyze your weld. You will quickly notice that metal of different thicknesses require different settings for different techniques. Different techniques give different results. Pushing and pulling are basic techniques. Pulling is when the gun is leaning ahead of the weld. Pulling produces more heat and better penetration. Pushing is when the gun is leaning behind the weld. Pushing flattens the bead and allows for faster travel speed. Most welds require the gun angle to be perpendicular to the weld.
Let's try joining some metal with a simple butt joint. This is two pieces of metal butted together. It is a weak weld, so avoid if possible. Tack welds are used to secure and align your work. It can also be used to prevent warping. A weld along the grooves between work surfaces is called a groove weld. This is a butt weld with the same welder settings on thicker material, but while using the lowercase e technique to get better penetration. A lap joint is two pieces of metal on the same plane overlap. The fillet weld is used here to create an angular shaped weld between the two surfaces. The strongest lap joints are welded on both sides. Here is a lap joint on thicker material. I had to adjust the settings before this weld. Don't get too close to the edges either, they will melt into the weld. The corner joint is a joint between two surfaces that create a right angle forming an L-shape. A T-joint is between surfaces meeting at right angles to create a T-shape. The strongest T-joints are welded on both sides. The lowercase e panel works great. Horizontal welds work best with the gun angle aiming up at the bead to support the weld puddle. Vertical welds can be pushed uphill as well. Vertical fillet welds can be tricky, but they are fun. A triangulated spiral pattern is used.
Joining metal of different thicknesses requires a modified lower case E pattern. The trick is to hesitate when the gun is over the thicker metal to put more heat into it and prevent blowing through the thinner material. The best way to become a better welder is to always have a good ground, a short stick out, the right MIG welder settings, and a good technique while working smart and safe. More importantly, the only way to improve is by practicing. This concludes MIG welding for beginners.